What does humility look like in a relationship? Yes, one of the very first questions I feel a couple needs to ask themselves, if they were both humble, what that would they be doing inside of the relationship? Now, obviously, there's so many things we could cover here. Yeah. And, and we've only constructed a very, very short list of things to go through. But humility has very wide ranging effects in our life. And in fact, we have done presentations before about humility itself. And there's many things or many qualities or aspects of humility that we would need to consider if we truly considered this particular question. So my suggestion to a couple is to have a look at the material presented about humility that we've already presented on our website, the videos and audios and the, and the written material, and ask themselves that question and create a list for themselves. You know, this is something you can do for yourself in your relationship in terms of growing close in your relationship, is to sit down together, work your, both, both of you, work your way through what humility would look like if you were both being humble at any one point in time. Mm. But what we'll do now probably is go through the individual uh, answers to that question yeah. of what, just some, just some examples that people can look at so that they can see the difference between humility and a lack of humility in the relationship. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, the first one we've listed is that I and my partner accept God's truth rather than holding on to personal false beliefs or accepting the false beliefs of our partner. Yes. You could say um, if you didn't believe in God that you hold on to universal truth. In other words, something is truthful whether one or both of you believe it not to be. And if you believe in God and you actually started to accept some of God's truth, then the question becomes, what would I do if both my partner and myself wanted to have God's truth as our personal opinion? Mm. So this, this is all about giving up your personal opinions. Yeah. And this is where I notice most couples in a relationship have a lot of difficulty. Mm. They want to hold on to their personal opinions all the time. And the problem with personal opinions is it's been coloured by your life experience. In other words, you've grown up with these opinions, which are often set in your family. They're often inaccurate when it comes to love, truth and humility. And they're often also quite wrong morally and ethically. And so we need to start questioning our personal opinions and in fact being willing to have this underlying willingness mm -hmm. to give up personal opinion, to not value your personal opinion at all. All, in fact, is where you need to head. And this is something that I find a lot of people struggle with in conversation with them. They're struggling with giving up their own concept of what they believe to be true and actually recognising that actually what they believe to be true doesn't actually matter at all. <laughs> and, and it's very important that both parties, uh, both parties, both couple in the couple mm -hmm. both par parties in the partnership recognize that their own personal opinions don't really matter at all right? yeah i find it funny <laughs> because i often have this image of like a candle in a rainstorm or a huge gust of wind and if we think of our personal opinion like that tiny little flame and we're doing everything to protect it and protect it but god's whole universe is designed to expose the untruth we have within us. Yes. And if that to means blow blowing out, out that candle, <laughs> it's going to happen one way or another. Yes. And yet people expend, and I've done it myself, expend so much energy in trying to protect this piddly little flame um, when in fact letting go of it leads to more freedom Correct. anyway. Correct. So uh, this is a very important aspect of this quality of humility, being able to actually not value your own opinions at all. Mm -hmm. Now, the majority of people on the planet struggle deeply with that. Their own opinions are what they live by generally. <laughs> and so they really struggle to let go of their own opinions in acceptance of some other truth. Now, I'm not suggesting you let go of your opinions uh, in acceptance of a lie, mm -hmm. but when something else is proven to you, to you to be truthful, then you need to learn to accept it immediately. And the, the more rapidly you accept it, the easier it will be for you. Yeah. And this is why it's so important to understand that principle of humility. Yeah. 
people often a- attach a lot of their sense of worth to being right about yes. issues, don't they? Yes. When really the two issues are completely separate. Their worth is completely independent Correct. of whether they're wrong or right on Correct. whatever the issue is. Yes. And if you look at it from God's perspective, God knows everything. So from God's perspective, our own opinions are probably mostly wrong. <laughs> Which is exactly the second thing on our list <laughs> exactly. that, of what, what humility looks like in a relationship. Correct. We both admit that, look, we're probably wrong. We're probably both wrong. <laughs> yeah, we're probably both of us wrong, <laughs> at least in some part about whatever the issue is that yes. we're facing. Yes. Now, there are times, of course, when in a relationship, one person has learnt something in love or in truth that the other person has yet to learn. And there's also times in a relationship where we've had certain background where, you know, for example, if one party in the relationship has had an abusive childhood, then obviously their concepts of love are probably more distorted than a person who's had a very, very loving childhood. And so obviously the person who's had the loving childhood may find that they have God's opinion more frequently than the other. But we need to both be aware that we both probably at times are going to be completely wrong. And in fact, uh, when we begin the process of working towards pure love, there's a high likelihood that we're both quite wrong most of the time. And in fact, our definitions of love are quite skewed and damaged and we need to repair them somehow. And the, the only way we're going to start repairing them is by firstly seeing that they are actually out of harmony with ethics and morality. So, so that's the only way that we're going to actually begin to repair something by seeing it's wrong. And if we can't admit we're wrong, we're going to have a huge difficulty <laughs> seeing something's wrong. <laughs> we are. And so what we're talking about is not just globally saying, oh, look, I'm wrong about everything. We're not saying throw out your logic. But throw out. we need to say that there is the potential that that is actually true. Exactly. <laughs> we <laughs> that do. we're wrong about almost everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I mean, without uh, we, we need to still investigate. And Correct. this humble attitude is about investigating, which is why we're willing to admit Well, it's not just about investigating, it's also about being willing to accept that you're wrong and willing to accept an opinion that is demonstrably true or more loving or more humble than what your current opinion is. So that requires a degree of humility that I find the majority of people on the planet don't seem to have at this point, but but it is necessary in a really loving relationship. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right, next one Mm -hmm. follows closely on with that. I and my partner do not have an arrogant belief in ourselves. Yes. Now, you see this comes usually through childhood injuries where one or both parents have taught the child that it is the center of the parent's universe. It's a very damaging thing to do to a child, to teach the child that it should be able to get away with anything and that it is the center of the parent's universe. And I see a lot of parents making this very large mistake uh, bringing up their children. The problem is that these kind of children grow into an adult who believes themselves to be always right and and to be the center of the universe. And this obviously is a very distorted view of reality and obviously will cause huge amounts of problems in a relationship. Now, usually those kind of people attract a person who believes themselves to be wrong most of the time, Mm. because otherwise no one else could live with them. And so there is a, you can see the the idea of codependence beginning to form. And, And this is what the problem is, is if one or both arrogantly believe that they are always right in some way, and they've grown up from their childhood to believe that they should be the center of the universe, of another person's universe too, then then that means that they are going to have some deep difficulties having a real close, emotionally open relationship with their partner. Because what you were going to talk in a minute about um, feeling superior also, um, this arrogance is also linked to not just feeling right, is it? It's also linked to feeling of having more worth yeah. over the other person. So when we're in a humble relationship, neither of us believes ourselves to be superior to the other. Exactly. There is true equality in the relationship. Many religious uh, viewpoints are com- completely 
opposite to this opposite to this concept or idea. If you look at the Christian viewpoint, it's that the man is the head of his household. So he has, uh, although they say that the man and the woman are equal, he has the final decision. Well, in God's relationship with God's, you know, the way God defines relationship, no one has the need for a final decision. And so, we, you know, this is something that we need to address. And in fact, from God's perspective, the most loving person should make the final decision, actually. And if we examine the Muslim view, it's very, very similar. There, there are similarities, ironically, between both religious concepts, even though both religions historically have been at loggerheads with each other. They ironically have almost identical concepts when it comes to family life. Well, they all come from the same culture. It, in Correct. So, which is the reason why? Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And if you look at the the concept that was around when we were first born in the first century, it was a it, there was a great a lot of skew towards the male being dominant in in the environment, and and whether the male or the female is dominant in the relationship, it is wrong and therefore unequal. And usually, it is because one has a sense of arrogance and the other has a sense of inferiority that causes such. A dominance by one gender over the other in a relationship and what we're suggesting is humility would not allow that to occur yeah. and, and wouldn't allow that to occur and wouldn't allow it to occur within oneself or to let the partner have that happen to them yeah yes. so we neither of us would feel superior to the other and neither of us would feel inferior to the other and neither of us would allow that state in the other a yes. feeling of superiority or superior inferiority and we would each value each other's worth to be equal to the other yeah and which is a very very important part of a relationship by the way it's a very very important part of love generally <laughs> you know we shouldn't we shouldn't believe anybody in the world is superior to uh, to ourselves or inferior to ourselves but this often carries through into relationships unfortunately and causes a lot of damage inside of relationships mm. Mm. yeah okay when we're in a humble relationship I and my partner always desire to be loving and true. Oh, sorry. Let's say truthful and honest, no yes. matter what the cost or yes. the perceived cost. Yes. So a person who's humble will always admit to the truth and not only admit to it, but desire it and desire to be truthful. So, so it's not reluctant admittance to truth, but rather a deep, longing within the soul to be truthful and honest in all circumstances and situations, including honest and truthful with every single one of your personal emotions. Now, most couples that I've observed struggle immensely with this. They are not humble enough to actually declare the truth to their partner or to allow the partner to declare the truth to them and for the relationship to remain. Yeah. So what happens if your partner says, oh, I had a feeling of attraction towards this lady today? Now, in this circumstance of humility, both of you would cope with that being declared. In <laughs> because you both desire that level of honesty between each other. Correct. Yeah, and also you can't fix a problem that you don't know about or the the other person or both of you are not recognizing so if so certainly if there's an attraction someone towards another party outside of the relationship then obviously both of you need to know about it and both of you need to work on what is this that's caused this attraction to occur and why aren't we as attracted to each other as what we thought these are all issues that need to be raised but unfortunately most people don't have that level of truthfulness or honesty in their relationship and as a result there is no emotional closeness and as, as a result of no emotional closeness there is also generally little sexual closeness, closeness in long-term relationships mm -hmm. mm. mm. yeah very true okay also in this humble relationship we both desire to be loving with each other yes so I need to have a focus that I want to love you. I want to do what's loving to you. I want to be honest and truthful, as we talked about in our previous comment, mm -hmm. but I also want to love you. I want to care for you. I want to be kind to you and compassionate 
of you, compassionate of your circumstances and your emotional injuries and your feelings and all of those things. I want to do that, not that I'm forced into doing that. Yeah, there's right? a big difference. There's a huge difference between or those I two states. Or I feel obliged or it's the right thing to do. Or, or I do it only because you do it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, uh, as long as you do it to me, I'll do it to you. But if you don't do it to me, then all bets are off. <laughs> No, that's not what pure love does. Pure love is like that under all circumstances and under all pressures. And also, we mentioned here, it's the desire to be loving. So it's not that we're perfect in love 100% of the time. Yeah. It's yeah. because, remember, we're having to face it. We're probably wrong about well, a lot of Well, this is a things. part of the humility section that we're talking about. Yeah. You know, part of humility is recognising that we're not loving all the time. But having that desire, yes. that's what creates a humble relationship yes. between the two. And if we're truly yes. humble, we would recognise when we don't have that desire mm -hmm. and we would deal with that in yeah. some way, whether that's taking action to leave the person or taking action to develop that love that's within our, so, yeah, that's cap we're capable of developing um, for the person that we originally had so that we can enter this or re-enter this kind and compassionate and understanding state. Mm. Mm. So, which leads us to the next point, which is about experiencing emotion. Yes. So in the humble relationship, both of us desire to express and experience our own emotion mm -hmm. rather than involving the other party mm -hmm. in our emotional experience. So we want to do it for ourselves. or And we don't want to suppress our own emotional experience or the experience of our partner. Yes, boy, you see all of these things happening in a terrible way in most relationships. And it's viewed as love, <coughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately it is viewed as love. So if we, take, if we dissect this comment mm -hmm. into the three sections, the yeah. first section was? We, we want to express and experience our own emotion for ourselves without involving the other party. Right. Now that, if you just let that set with, set with you for a bit, you can see that the average person doesn't do this. The average person wants other people to know what they feel. Isn't that why you have a husband? So he can so, be there when you're upset? Exactly. And make it all better? They need someone to be validate. there for them, yeah. is the saying, yeah. as yeah. the saying goes. Well, no, a good relationship doesn't need the other person to be there for you. A good relationship is that you're there for the other person and that you don't need the other person to be there for you. And the binding force is not sharing in the suppression or the troubles of the other par partner. It's in this striving for love and striving Correct. for truth and striving to assist the other person. Sure, if, if, if it's from a few, pure place, yes. but not to help, not to demand that the other person become engaged with your emotion, Correct. which is really asking them to be engaged in your emotional suppression because you can't actually... Well, it's actually asking them to be engaged in your addiction. Addiction, And yeah. your addiction is that you need them to feel anything. Yeah. And God doesn't, in a, in a pu place of pure love, you don't need anyone other than God to feel anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is a very distorted viewpoint of love that the world has, and it's a part of humility. We must learn to feel and experience our own emotions without demanding anybody else share in that experience. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the demand upon somebody else is unloving and, and, and damaging, in fact, to their soul if they respond to it. So It's very damaging as well, isn't it, to create that in your uh, partnership and then in your family unit because eventually everyone gets terrified to have their own emotional experience without involving someone else, yes. even if they initially didn't feel that way. Yes. Because there's a lot of um, codependence that's created. Yes. We could say grown-ups feel their own emotion without needing someone else to share in it with them. Yeah. That's what a grown-up does. Yeah. God wants you to be a grown-up. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to say that. And now being humble is a part of being a grown-up. So humble, in this phase of it, we're talking, and we've got two more phases of the emotional experience to talk about with humility. But in this particular phase, what we're saying is that if you are willing and desire to go through your own emotional experience without involving someone else in that experience, then you are being far more humble and therefore far more desirous of feeling your own emotion mm. 
than you would be if you share or shared or want, wanted somebody else to experience your emotions with you. Yeah. So that, that's number one part of this, this section point. that we're talking about, about, about emotions in humility. Mm. Now, the second part was... The second part is about involving the other party in the suppression of emotion. Yes. Now, quite frequently we notice, and, and again, it's a very popular <laughs> thing to do, is that I want the other person to make my negative emotion, usually it's done with negative emotion, but also it's done with positive emotion, I want it to be satisfied or go away. Now, satisfied in a sense, like let's say I have some sexual feelings for my partner, then I want my partner to satisfy them. Mm -hmm. Or go away, meaning let's say I feel like crying, I want my partner to make me happy again, to cheer me up, right? These are methods that we're using to suppress our own emotions and we're basically manipulating our partner into agreeing with that way of dealing with our emotions mm -hmm. and it's very it's a lack of humility that causes us to do this and it's very damaging in the long term to relationships yeah yeah, yeah absolutely all right and then so so the third part the third part is about the emotional experience of our partner Yes. So we don't want to suppress the emotional experience of our partner either. Yes, so we see that happening a lot too, don't you? Yeah. Like, so, so for example, uh, the guy gets angry about something and so he goes outside and bashes and crashes and beats her. And inside the woman's going, how can I shut him down? How can I shut him down? It's scaring me. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. scaring me. Fear is usually the main trigger for doing this. It's scaring me. Uh, what do we notice guys do? Well, the lady starts crying in the relationship and the guy's going, what do I do? What do I do? How do I fix it? How do I fix it? How, am I responsible? I don't know. <laughs> and so he tries to shut down her tears, yeah. Yeah. right? He tries to make it all go away. He tries to alleviate her distress and really alleviate his own distress mm -hmm. through her having the experience. Now, a person who's humble doesn't do that. He, he lets himself feel how he feels about his partner crying. Yeah. Right? yeah. Rather than trying to stop his partner from crying. Yeah. 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 So to summarise this last point, which is really actually quite vital, isn't it? Yeah, maybe it's... I can give another illustration where I see it happen before you summarise. Yeah. And that is uh, the illustration of sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. Because I see this happening a lot in sexual relationship where the male has a desire for his woman and she's trying to shut him down quite significantly yeah. by doing all sorts of things to avoid mm -hmm. the con connection of sexual desire or Distracting, passion. being condescending, yes. uh, picking a fight, all kinds of yeah, things. Being busy, trying to yeah. be busy when, with unnecessary things. You know, there's all sorts of things that happen under those circumstances. And this is another way of avoiding an emotion. Yeah. So people need to realise that a lot of things that happen during their sexual relationship is also about avoiding emotion, which is a lack of humility. Mm. Mm. And often women use sex to avoid other emotions. When they do wish to engage with sex, often they're doing it to suppress other fearful emotions, a sense of being unattractive, these kinds of things, exactly. which is not a pure way to engage sex definitely not and it's certainly not giving it's no. actually demanding something f for the activity yeah so so none of these things are actually loving and so we, if we're humble we would recognize these particular things as all attempts to emotionally either suppress ourselves or others or to manipulate ourselves or others into the suppression of emotion rather than the true self-responsible feeling of emotion mm. <laughs> Okay, let's summarise that point. Yes. So, let's say grown-ups. <laughs> <laughs> grown-ups. Grown-ups want to experience their own emotions. Yes. For themselves. Without needing somebody without else to share. Without needing someone else. <laughs> so, what they don't do is try to engage their partner in helping them experience their emotion or sharing in their emotion. Correct. They don't attempt to involve their partner in suppressing their emotion, to yes. trying to make them feel better or feel... Or to help their emotion. Yep, so that was the first point, wasn't yeah, it? Helping yeah. them to feel their emotion? No, yeah, mean? well, it, it, I mean in terms of, it, remember that some emotions we want to suppress and some emotions we'd like to have, ah, right? Yes. In other words, so we don't involve our partner in cheering us up yeah. or suppressing our emotion. Yeah. Let's say we're afraid and our partner tries to make our fear go away. So we don't try to make our partner make the emotion stronger. Heighten it. Heighten yeah. it or make it go away. Yeah. Either way, yes, is, is suppressing. Yeah. yeah, like, come on, I'm having fun. Yeah, 
Make more fun with me. Though. Exactly. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn on the music loud because I don't I want to drown out the fact that you're having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. right. So. Put on beating music so that we can all feel good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of ways I see it, it being manipulated in relationships, but we're, we're now digressing and not yeah. having our summary. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, summary. Yeah. Grown ups want to experience our own emotion for mm -hmm. ourselves. Yes. So we want to express it and experience it. Yes. We don't want to involve our partner in helping us to experience our emotion. Mm -hmm. We don't want to involve our partner in helping us to suppress or heighten an emotion. Mm -hmm. And we do not try to suppress the, or heighten or heighten or share in the emotional experience of our partner. Correct. <laughs> we got just it. that one thing alone. The average couple on the planet just needs a lot of work <laughs> because yeah. it's, a, it's a huge area. So, and, and it's a huge minefield when it comes to uh, problems in a relationship as well. So that's why we've listed it. Yeah. What I notice is that most people feel that without doing all of those things, there is no relationship. Correct. That is the basis of the relationship well, and the, the value of the relationship. Well, that's the them. addiction in their relationship. Yeah. Their addiction in the relationship is that I, I have a relationship with you because I want you to feel my emotions and I want you to share in my emotions and I want you to help me. Me up or cheer me up or make me or happy or, or, or put me down you know yeah. or whatever i need what you know the opposite of usually whatever i you know whatever i want the opposite of what i'm feeling and and most parties in the in the world most most people in relationships in the world view that as a good relationship yeah. And actually, from God's perspective, it is a terrible relationship. <laughs> Which doesn't exist as a relationship. Well, from God's or... perspective, it's not pure love. And you certainly are not going to ever have a soulmate relationship based on that particular thing. Mm. You, if, you, if you don't work on that particular, that one thing alone, you will never have a soulmate relationship. Even if your person you're with is your soulmate, you're still never going to have a soulmate relationship. So my relationship is not dependent on that. <laughs> so, so I think that was the last point of That's humility. That's the last point. And so when we look at these points of humility, you can see that the majority of relationships fail even when it comes to humility. The, mm -hmm. Either one or both parties do not you know, fit into this desire for true humility inside of their relationship. Now, we're going to talk later about how to develop some humility in relationships and so forth. But, but at this point, we wanted to suggest that these particular things are essential if you want to have a good relationship and certainly essential if you want to have a relationship when you're at one with God. Because if you're at one with God, these things become automatic processes inside of the relationship. Yeah. You'll never get to be one with God unless you deal with these issues. Correct. Yeah. And this is where I feel a lot of people are hoping they'll become at one with God without addressing these particular issues. And it's physically and emotionally impossible to be at one with God and have these particular emotional errors or have the lack of humility inside of a relationship. Yeah. So humility in the relationship, just like humility in the relationship with God, is what I feel of paramount importance to developing the relationship. And I feel we're never going to develop humility in our relationship with God if we can't do it with the person in front of us. Exactly. If you can't do it with someone who you can see. Who you can have sex with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who you can have sex with and have some nice feeling from yeah. immediately, immediately without having to feel very much, yeah. <laughs> then it's highly unlikely you're going to do it with God. Yeah. Highly unlikely. Yeah. And, and yet I think the majority of people feel the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is strange to me because it feels to me, no, your relationship has a great opportunity to, to actually improve your relationship with God. But if you're avoiding this aspect of humility in your relationship, then you are definitely avoiding this same aspect of humility in your relationship with God. Yeah. And I also wanted to say, sorry, um, that, that the, there is an important thing we need to consider, and that is, Humility is the keystone of any relationship. So, so we need to have humility before we can have any relationship, let alone a relationship with God or a relationship with a partner. Yeah. Humility is the key in that relationship. Now, it's one of the foremost qualities that we need to develop if we're ever going to have any kind of good relationship and definitely any kind of loving relationship. Yeah. We need humility. 
you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I get so excited. Um, I was going to say that a lot. I, you mentioned about how people often feel that they're going to be able to establish humility with God and avoid it in their relationship, or yeah. they think it's going to be easier with God than it is with their partner. It's harder. And can I explain why? Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's harder because God's quieter. Your relationship isn't your, your part, partner isn't quiet generally. They'll tell you when something's wrong. Well, God's not going to tell you when something's wrong. You just won't feel God's love into you, and you've got to be very, very sensitive to feel not or feel or not feel God's love into you to notice what's going on a lot of the times. So, so God is not going to yell at you. God's not going to say something to you when you disconnect from God. Your partner likely will. <laughs> so that's why if, if you're not being humble with your partner, then it's highly unlikely you will ever be able to be humble with God. Yeah, and I feel that people very much misunderstand the quality of humility when they say when they have that attitude. And and I've had a lot of people say to me, "Oh, it's much easier for you because your partner is much more perfect in love." And that's a, it's actually that's, harder. Yes, in some ways, in because, some ways, well, in a lot of ways, oh. because because you've got to be more personally sensitive yep. than otherwise. That's right, and but also. I mean the person who's the sorry. <laughs> I mean the person who's of a of what they might classify as a lower condition has to be more personally sensitive because they won't know when they're injuring their partner as much as their partner will know. Exactly. Right. And as a result of that, if you truly want to develop a, a relationship in love, that partner, the more loving they become, the more like God they will become. Right. So they will just instead of saying something to you, they'll just walk away. And you won't even know why. <laughs> and also, they they will they will tolerate your error much. There's a much finer, um, like you said, they'll walk away. Or yeah, there's less it, tolerance of the error. Yes. Yes, there's less. There's a lot of patience, but less tolerance of the error. Exactly. And that is very very confusing to a person who's in a lower condition of love. So yeah, there's a lot of reasons why. A relationship with a partner developing humility is essential and also it will help you greatly in your relationship with God. And I still didn't get my point out. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, which was really the misconception that humility can is easier to cultivate. It, humility is, a, for me, it's a quality that I need to cultivate from within myself. And my errors exist within me, and I must develop the desire to confront my errors. Mm -hmm. And really having a person who's loving in front of me, sure, that, is, that assists me, but it's not, it's not the key work that I have to do. It doesn't make it easier necessarily. For well, it me confronts to... more of the errors as well. Yeah. So which it's actually I... more challenging. It is, mm. which I now value, mm. but which I feel a lot of people misunderstand. Correct, correct. And decide that it'll be easier with God than it is with their partner, when in fact it's the same deal. No, well, it's actually going to be more confronting with God than with their partner. Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty of having the relationship with God. Yeah. It will help you in all of your other relationships, including the one with your partner. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of people who arrogantly say about you that you've got it easier than they have. Actually, Mary's got it harder than the average person has with relationship because, no, you have, because there's a lot more confronted immediately than with the average relationship just because of the differing conditions and one person being more connected with God than the other. There's a lot, there's a lot more confrontation of the person's personal, not confrontation of the person in terms of of competition or attack, but confrontation of the person's condition. And, and I feel people don't understand that very much. The average woman on this planet wouldn't be able to live with me for five minutes, let alone 24 hours, right? And the average woman on the planet, by the way, and the average man on the planet doesn't live with God for any longer than a second or two a day at the most. At the most. Right? That's the reality. They don't live with God any longer than that. And that's because of the lack of humility, right? So, so the more humility we have in the relationship, we will have far greater ability 
to grow, to have a close relationship, to grow in love, to grow in truth. It's just going to be wonderful, but it can be quite confronting initially because almost every single personal opinion we have is probably wrong about love and probably wrong about truth and probably wrong about what makes a good relationship. And we need to give all that up. And that's what a part, that's also a part of humility. Mm. Yeah. So I feel this section on humility is number one. We need to focus on in the relationship, both of us being humble, both of us having what we listed, but obviously there's a lot more aspects of humility we haven't discussed, but, but these are some primary aspects of humility. And in fact, the, if the average couple just practice those particular things we have mentioned, they would find their relationship improve immeasurably their relationship would be far better than it currently is. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs>